parents, I think, were the ones who taught me that the creative arts were something that were important and that I had received some gifts. The experience of my parents coming here as refugees in 1950. My father was a classical pianist and a teacher of classical piano in the Harrisburg area for whew, 70 years. And my mother was a painter and writer. After my mother died, my father and I put together a, a book of her poetry that she had written from the time they left Latvia uh, up until the day of her death. And she never told anybody about it. Um, and then we distributed the book globally around the world to different libraries that also had Latvian um, language, literature, and things like that. As you can see behind me, mostly ceramics, and that's something that I was drawn to from an early age. Um, in high school, I did some ceramics, and then going through art school with classical drawing, painting, and sculpture, I missed it so badly that when I was able to return to ceramics, I made it something that was very important in my life. My processes are varied. I work with maybe three to five different types of clays, everything from a low-fire earthenware to a high-fired porcelain and different um, stoneware bodies in between. My journey through ceramics is more experimental and I like to get involved in the processes of many different things. If it's pit firing or raku or doing different kinds of uh, decorative surfaces with underglazes or I've tried Mayolica for a while. I'm continually interested in experimenting and I would find that most of my things end up in a smash pile and I have it downstairs and in the back. <laughs> but every once in a while I'll feel good enough to put a piece on my shelf. A typical, a typical piece, like something like a mug like this, um, is created on the wheel rather rapidly, but then to add a handle and to put it together and to decorate the piece is more time consuming. So something that would have an underglaze has to be glazed three or four times with the underglaze, then it has to be fired in a bisque firing, and then it has to be glazed again with a food safe clear glaze. And then if there's any kind of highlight or any kind of gold luster or anything that's put on a piece, it could go through a third and fourth firing. So um, from beginning to end, the quickest piece can be produced probably between two to three weeks, the whole process, because things have to dry. But I speed things up sometimes on my furnace or whatever, so. And then, of course, things are more elaborate. It might take years to do something, like the piece that I have in the window or whatever. It made me smile because it's, it's very rare to get exactly what you want out of ceramics, and I think I like the element of surprise a lot. Hi, I'm Jeb Boyd. I'm uh, the other half of Vivian Verbeck. I got started because I was fascinated by the way that my mother took pictures all the time. My mother was just my best friend, my guiding influence and everything, and I lost her too early, but uh, I still have two of her cameras that sit upstairs, you know, next to the computer where I do all my editing. And I, we had always had photo albums around and uh, it, you know, it just was something that to me, it just seemed normal to be a photographer kind of. Having my work in other spaces, to have something on commission or to feel that something was constantly being juried, um, I thought it's time for me to have my own space and I had enough things to do that and I knew I always wanted to live in my own space. So Jeb and I live upstairs and we have our building, um, we purchased it at a time where we could afford it. This whole thing is ours and us. There's a different atmosphere in here than a lot of places. We, we aren't pushy at all. Um, one of my pat phrases when somebody would walk out, I'd say, did you see anything that made you smile? And virtually every time the person says, oh yeah, I really liked, and they tell me what they liked and why, and they walk away with a smile on their face. 
That's just unbelievable. I think one of the last things that my mother told me before she died was that I shouldn't do what she did. And I was never quite sure of what that meant until I started reading her poetry. She was a very personal and humble person, and she didn't extend herself into the public very much. And I felt as though she was trying to support me by putting, respecting my space and living in the space where I create and being available to inspire other people. And I feel embarrassed to say that, but I want, I want to open my door and to share possibilities with others. For more from Mosaic, please like and subscribe to the channel or check out another video. To help support this project, please visit witf.org mosaic.